David Gerard here. I'm on the campus of the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma to share with you a brief life history of an author who taught and wrote here. Someone I knew, Darcy O'Brien. In history books, people are known for their accomplishments, and Darcy O'Brien had many of them. But in real life, a person is remembered for his or her very human qualities. Though I had contact with Darcy O'Brien for only a few short years, he was affable, funny, irreverent at times, but he always took an interest in all those he met. And he sought to find avenues of common interest, not reasons, to set himself apart. Dr. O'Brien was one of my creative writing instructors, and I met with him frequently for a year. He was a genuinely interesting person who had a very interesting life. Here's Dr. Lars Engel, who worked with Darcy O'Brien for many years before O'Brien's death in 1998. Hi, David. It's a great pleasure to talk for a while about my former colleague, Darcy O'Brien. I chose this background advisedly. Darcy was a Californian through and through. He was raised in Hollywood, the child of two stars, uh, George O'Brien, who was the star of many westerns, uh, and uh, Marguerite Churchill, uh, who uh, I think also uh, was the star of talkies as well as, as uh, silent movies. And um, Darcy's first novel, A uh, Way of Life Like Any Other, which I think is my favorite of his novels, uh, was about growing up in Hollywood and having movie stars as parents. The times I talked with Darcy O'Brien, he didn't talk about his Hollywood upbringing. I didn't know then whether the divorce of his parents and their fall from stardom was a sore point with him or he didn't want to be known as the son of movie stars and wanted to be known for his own talent. But obviously, Darcy O'Brien was not a showman as was his father or mother. And Dr. O'Brien cut out a career of his own as a literary critic and top-notch author. Dr. O'Brien started out writing literary criticism. However, he soon became captivated with another kind of writing. He came to TU really in order to write for a larger and wider audience. Uh, and he mostly wrote true crime fiction, starting with The Hillside Stranglers, which was his first bestseller, uh, and wrote a long series of such accounts of pretty horrific crimes, uh, aided in his research by his wife, uh, Suzanne, who survives him. When I met with Dr. O'Brien, he had just finished Murder and Little Each, a real-life tale of a father accused of killing his adult son. And he was working on A Dark and Bloody Ground, another crime story. Dr. O'Brien talked about his novel with me, sharing some of the things he had learned in Kentucky researching his book. I think Dr. O'Brien's talking about his work in progress was a way of working through some of the writing challenges he faced. And when the book came out in 1993, I felt, quite wrongly, that I had a part in its creation. Darcy was an extremely charming, affable, genuine, funny, subtle man, in his way learned, but also uh, the complete opposite of a snob. Uh, and uh, he cherished friendship, and Darcy was also very uh, convivial, friendly with many people in Tulsa who were not associated with the university. It was a great shock and great loss uh, when I... Dr. Engel mentioned that Dr. O'Brien was not a snob. Once in a class, another professor I had mentioned that he realized at one point in his career that he was an educated snob, and he had to check himself at times to keep himself from being one again. But that was never a problem with Darcy O'Brien, as Dr. Engel mentioned. Dr. O'Brien was never a snob despite his education, his position, or his talent. He was a Fulbright Scholar, 
a respected literary critic, and one of the best writers in America. Yet Dr. O'Brien always treated me and others with respect, and I looked forward to the days I met with him. We always spent most of the time laughing and telling stories. Dr. O'Brien loved telling stories, and it seemed he encouraged me not so much to write a good story, but to tell a good one.